Good morning, dear students. Welcome back to physics class. So we have discussed yesterday's about the power and some applications of power in different cases, how to solve that we have discussed. Hope it is clear. So we are continuing today the same uh, some applications of uh, power which we have left and many applications we are having in that we have discussed uh, some and uh, the familiar which you used to get in your competitive examinations. The intention to solve or to take the applications because of their competitive examinations only. So here uh, yesterday we have left the certain portion from the power. That will continue and after that we will start the correction. So here, yesterday as we have discussed about the power, if I consider any motor, if I take any motor, so what uh, actually motor does? So what we in our daily life, we are having the machines, engines, that has to do some work. So for example, if I take a water motor that pumps the water, right? So while it is pumping the water, it has done some work. To, the, to do that work, it has to require certain energy. For that energy, what we used to supply the motor and what amount of work has done by the motor. So how to calculate the what amount of work has done by the motor. So most of the cases we will get uh, the questions on the work done by the engine or what amount of work done by the engine. So that what we used to take the term here, efficiency of motor. That what we used to take, efficiency, efficiency. So here, efficiency of a motor, we can say it in a simplest way, we can calculate. It is a ratio of, ratio of, ratio of output power, output power to the input power, ratio of output power to the input power. So what power we used to supply to the motor and what power the motor delivers, that ratio which gives the efficiency of the motor. The efficiency of motor, it may be larger, it may be equal to the what uh, power we have delivered that what a maximum we are having. If it gives a, what power we have supplied to the motor, the same amount of power if it is delivered, then we used to say it is a 100% efficiency. That the work done by the engine is 100%. But there is no engine that gives a most 100% of efficiency. So less than that only we are having. The maximum it may be related to 60 or 70 percent. So let us uh, to uh, regarding the efficiency how to calculate. So what we are having the efficiency beta. Efficiency is the ratio of output power to the input power. The simplest way. So here efficiency is uh, denoted by eta. So efficiency is denoted by eta. The efficiency is equal to as we have the definition, output power to the input. That what we are having, power out to the power in is the way to calculate the efficiency here. If I take an example here, a motor is used to pump water or 
uh, let us take here. A motor used to pump water or a height which we used to take here, if I consider the water is uh, in a well. So, there we have used a pump in a depth of, uh, for example, if I consider 10 meter. Here the motor has been fixed and which used to pump the water to the sudden height where we used to store the water. Yes, are you getting? So, if it that height is also a 10 meter, the total what is the height? The total height the water pumped by the motor is h equal to h is equal to 20 meter. So now the amount of water which pumped, which is pumped by the motor, if I consider is a m. Then here the work done to take the water from the well to the store or to the tank. So here, what is the force that what we are having at a constant rate or at a constant velocity? If the water has been pumped by the motor, then what is the force is required? Mg. So what is the work done by the motor? Here the motor. What is the work done by the motor? The work done by the motor is equal to mgh. Are you getting? Mg is the force that is exerted by the motor to pump the water over a 20 meter. If I take that is the height h and this is what the work done by the motor. To do this work, it has taken certain time interval. Yes or no? So, if that I consider T is the time taken by the motor, then what is the power delivered by the motor? So, power delivered by the motor is equal to mgh upon T. Let us consider if, let us consider if 20 meter cube tank is there. 20 meter cube tank is that is the volume. If it is filled in a time duration of 5 minutes, in 5 minutes it has pumped over a height of 20 meter that is full 20 meter cube. So, as we know what is the density of water? The density of water is 1000 kg per meter cube. Yes sir. So, what is the mass? So, as we know, density is equal to mass upon volume. So, mass is equal to, we can take den volume into density. What is the volume we are having? So, here the volume that is uh, 20 into density is 1000. This is the mass of water which is pumped by the motor. Are you getting? So, what is the height? 20 meter we are having. So, we can use this data to calculate. So, are you getting I think. So, here what is the power? So, we can take now power delivered by the motor is equal to m is what we are having 20 into acceleration due to gravity you can take 9.8 for most of the times we used to take 10 meter per second square. If they have not given in the problem we have to take 9.8 only. If they mention you can take for our convenient we used to take 10. So, what is the height beta here? 20 meter. 20 into 10 raised to 3 is the mass of water. So, divided by what is the time taken by it? 5 minutes. Yes. What is the time taken? So, as we know here the time taken by the motor is 5 minutes. So, you can take that here 5, 5 into 60. Why? Minutes we have to convert into second. So, if I cancel this 0 and this 0 or 2 1s are 2 3s are. So, here 2 
into 98 I can take because I will shift the 0 here, the decimal point will be shifted into 10 raise to 3 divided by 5 3 is a it will be 15 and this is what the power delivered by the engine. So, power which you used to measure in watt. Are you getting? So, what is the efficiency now? The efficiency is equal to efficiency is equal to power out by power in. So, we can write here the power out is what we are having m g h upon t p in. So, what is the we can use this formula to calculate even the what is the power or power supply to the motor. So, how to calculate? So, here so efficiency is equal to what we are having. Efficiency is equal to p out by p in. So, what is the power supplied? If I take p in this side, so p in is equal to the output power upon efficiency. So, now here p in is equal to 1 upon efficiency into what is the p out we are having in this case m g h by t. So, this is what the power supplied to the motor. So, we can calculate the efficiency in this way and uh, this is a more than enough to calculate the efficiency. Okay. Let us take uh, some more applications here on power. Okay. So, here there is a motor there is a motor which pumps water through a pipe at a constant rate. A constant rate, the amount of water is pumped by the motor and the area of cross section of this pipe is A. And if the it is uh, pumping the water at a rate of if I consider dm by dt. The amount of water pumped by the motor through a pipe dm by dt. So, here through this pipe if we consider the water is flowing out at a constant rate. So, here what is the length of this? Length is L. If I consider this amount of water is pumped out dm by dt in a time interval of dt, the length is length of the pipe is very large if I take. This is a small length if I consider dl. A small length of the pipe in that what water contains that will be pumped out at a constant rate in a time duration t. If the velocity of velocity if we are having v, then what is the velocity? So, we can calculate here. The velocity is equal to as we know the rate of change of displacement. What is the displacement? That is a dl. So, I can write here dl by dt. That is what velocity. With this velocity, the water is pumping out. Are you getting? So, now here, what amount of water is pumped out? So, as we know, what is the density of this liquid? Density of liquid is rho. Are you getting? Density of liquid is rho. What is the volume of this pipe? If I consider volume, volume V. So, what is the volume? Volume is equal to area. Area is the given A. Area of cross-section is A. What is the length? That is DL. I think you are getting. This is the volume. Now, what is the mass? We will consider here dm is the mass of water which is pumped out. So, mass of water is equal to volume into density just we have taken in previous while calculating the efficiency. Yes sir. So, here the mass of water dm is equal to volume. Volume is what we are having. Area into length. At a constant rate, the amount of water is flowing, right? Then if I take dm by dt, 
So that equal to what will get bit higher? D that is A DL by rho upon dt. So can I write this is A as it is, rho as it is, DL by dt as we have just calculated that is the velocity with which the water is flowing out. So I will write here the velocity V. That means uh, dm by dt is equal to a rho v. V is the velocity with which the water is flowing out. This is what at this rate the water is flowing out. Here the question. What question we are having? If the water is flowing out at the rate of dm by dt for this for this if the force exerted by the motor is f force exerted by the motor is f and power delivered is power given by the motor is p are you ready for this rate of flow of water the force exerted by the motor and power given by the motor is P and force exerted by the motor is F if we consider. If suppose, if suppose the rate of flow of water, rate of flow of water, if I consider it increased by n times, the rate of flow of water is increased by n times in the same time. What time taken here? In the same time, if the rate of flow of water is increased n times, then what amount of force must be increased by the motor and power increased by the motor? So, let us take here. If n times is increased, then can I consider this is a dm by dt dash this is the amount of water which is flowing out after increasing n times. This is equal to n times. Okay. So now here force is equal to. So velocity is constant. So here as we take the rate of flow of water, the force is equal to as we know that is uh, m into a. a is what? Acceleration. So, this is uh, according to second law, right, when mass is constant. So, we have taken another formula also when the mass is changing. Then, the force we are having in that case that is equal to V dm by dt. I think you all remembered in the class we have taken while deriving the Newton second law of motion, while by keeping the mass constant and by keeping the velocity constant. So, here velocity we are keeping constant, velocity we are keeping constant, the dm by dt is changing. So, that we have taken force. If force is this much, if force is this much, then what is the power? Then as we know power is equal to force into velocity. What is the force we are having in this case? Force is equal to v dm by dt. V dm by dt into what we are having the V, right. So, V into V, V square, this is the power. The power is equal to V square dm by dt. So, this is what the power is provided by the motor. So, now increasing after increasing n times, if it increases the n times, then what we are having? So, let us take here, it is increased by n times. So, here dm by dt as we know, dm by dt is equal to a rho v, v is the velocity. If I consider dm by dt whole dash, which is increased how many times? If I consider, that is the dash and here it will be a dash, rho dash and v dash, I will consider, I will consider. But you have to observe here, we are taking the same time, same pipe, right? The area of cross section of the pipe will remain same. The same liquid we are taking, then density will also remain same. The pipe we are keeping as it is, 
then what should be increased dm by dt if it is increased means so you have to ob observe here the velocity must increase how many times the velocity should increase this velocity is increasing so how it is increasing see here so as i come here i'll take this as it is dm by dt hope you are following all of you dm by dt u dash a area of cross section as we observed remains same same liquid same water we are having density will be remain same so is changing what that v dash i'll keep as it is but dm by d dt dash is equal to what we are having beta n times can i write here n times of dm by dt but dm by dt is what we are having i write here a rho v dash is equal to n what we are having a rho v so a get cancel rho rho get cancel what remains v dash is becomes what times n times n times the velocity is increasing so that the, the n times the dm by dt is increasing as it increases the velocity is increasing area of constant will remain same density of the liquid will be the same so here as i take here the force is uh, f dash that equal to what we are having v dash dm by dt dash yes or no so v dash is what we are having n v yes we have taken here you have to observe but dm by di dash is what we are having n dm by dt so n into n so as we can write here n square v dm by dt then f dash the force is increased v dm by dt is a force then how many times we have to increase the force n square times we have to increase the force so that the dm rate of flow of liquid will be increased by n times are you getting so now here as we know the power so power p dash is equal to f dash into what we are having the v dash so f dash is what we are having n square times of f into v dash is what we are having n times of v so what we we'll get here n square into n that is n cube that is what we are having n cube are you getting so here if it is n cube n cube into f into v f into v is what p that is p dash is equal to n cube of p so n cube times n cube times the power should be increased okay hope it is clear remember if the rate of flow of water is increased by n times the keeping the area of cross section is constant pipe, uh, pipe of this is remain same the same water we are taking so n times if it is increased the rate of flow of liquid then what amount of uh, power and force should be increased by the engine so this is a way to calculate so here uh, the one question we got the rate of uh, constant at a constant rate of flow of water is taken place in the case of pipe if the three times of rate of flow of water is increased then what uh, oh, times the motor power should be increased three times we are taking three times means so as we are having here so you can write here three times p dash will be equal to three square how many times we should increase three cube is 27 of 27 times it is increase if i take two times if it is increase then p dash is equal to a two cube is what eight eight times we should increase this is a way to calculate the power okay so thank you so what we have taken this so this is what the way to calculate the power increased okay so now let us take here the one more example there is a there is an automobile one of the application is very important here this one also let us take uh, the theory oriented question they have asked here there is an automobile there is an automobile there is an automobile whose mass is m whose mass is what m whose mass is m 
which is starting from rest whose initial velocity is 0 when time t is equal to 0. Velocity is 0 when time t is equal to 0. So, here a constant power is delivered by the engine. Constant power is delivered by the engine. Then it is accelerating in the direction of power in the direction of force. So, now here in this case if after the certain time t after the certain time t as it reaches a certain position. So, here what there is an acceleration then of course after a certain time t it acquires a velocity. So, as it covering after a certain displacement it acquires certain position this is what displacement covered a body. The question is that if power is a constant power is constant power is constant if it is accelerating from the rest if the velocity acquired by a body at time t v and there is a displacement is s how the velocity and the positions are related to this time the question okay let us take here this is the question I think you got it. An automobile which is uh, starting from the rest whose initial velocity is 0 at time t equal to 0. A constant power is supplied by the engine. So, it gets accelerate. So, after a certain time it acquires the velocity v. After covering a displacement s. Yes. So, the velocity and position of that uh, automobile how it is related with the time or the time that we have to calculate here. Let us take here. As we know as we know as we know already here so that is force into velocity is equal to what we are having power that power what they have given here constant power is what constant if power is constant power is constant so here force into velocity P I L right as it is force is what m dv by dt into v directly I am writing acceleration but so acceleration is dv by dt so if I write here v dv I will keep as it is here that I will write if I take m this side so P by m dt this is the equation right so here dv by dt is what acceleration dv by dt is acceleration as we know force is equal to what mass into acceleration the force we can write mass into acceleration is what dv by dt that only i have taken here if this is the equation so velocity is changing from 0 to p let us take here i want to calculate if velocity is changing from 0 to t 0 to t sorry uh, velocity is changing from 0 to v in a time interval t can I integrate this equation above equation over the limits what is the limits we are having 0 to v so that equal to integration of p by m dt the time is also setting 0 to t then here integration of v with respect to v as we know already that is a v square upon 2. If I substitute v, v will be there. If I substitute 0, uh, just you take the values if you want 0 to v then integration of uh, that is a p by m is constant take it outside integration of uh, dt will be t. If you substitute the values 0 to t, if I substitute v square here that is a v square by 2 you will get minus 0 no need to take that I will write that as it is. So, here p by m if I substitute t as it is there will be integration constant c1. So, this is what we are having equation. So, as we know as we know already this is the equation we got when t equal to 0 t equal to 0 what is the v? v is also 0. If I substitute in this equation 0 
by anything is 0 that equal to p by m into 0 0 plus c 1. So, c 1 is equal to what 0 are you getting what is the c 1 value 0. So, now here the equation above equation we can write v square by 2 that equal to p by m into t. So, now we can write here v square equal to 2 p by m into t. So, that v is equal to I will write here 2 p by m power 1 by 2 t power 1 by 2 that is what square root. Square is there if I take that end that will be square root. Then p is a constant power delivered by the motor or engine is remain constant. m is the mass it will remain constant. So, 2 p by m is a constant then velocity is directly proportional to what square root of t. This is a relation. This is a relation of velocity and time. So, velocity and time relation what we are having that is v is directly proportional to t power 1 by 2. Okay. The next word we are having position. Next word we are having position. So, I will take here position. So, what is velocity? So, this equation only if I write here, I will write here v is equal to k t to the power of 1 by 2 v is equal to k t to the power of 1 by 2. What is k? k is 2p by m 1 by 2. That I will consider as a constant. That I will consider as a constant. Keep at that constant as it is. So, now from this equation, so as we know velocity is rate of change of displacement. Yes or no? The rate of change of displacement, what is v we are having? k t to the power of 1 by 2. So, can I write this equation? Rearrange it ds is equal to k t to the power of 1 by 2 dt. Hope you are getting till here is it clear? Okay. So, this is the equation we got. If now the what is the displacement is changing above the case 0 to s, 0 to s right, 0 to s in a duration of 0 to t. Then if I integrate again above equation over the limit 0 to s that equal to k as it is t power 1 by 2 dt over the limit 0 to t. Yes or no? So, differentiation it cancels. 0 to s is there. Only s will get. Or if you get it. So, s will get. So, that equal to that equal to k is a constant. Take it outside. t to the power of 1 by 2. Integration of t with respect to dt. So, we will get here t 1 by 2 plus 1 divided by 1 by 2 plus 1. Are you getting so, what is the value changing? 0 to t. So, s is equal to k. s is equal to k. So, t 1 by 2 plus 1. So, we will get what we will get? 3 by 2. See here. 1 by 2 plus 1 that equal to what? LCM if you take 1 plus 2 by 2 that equal to 3 by 2. Hope you are getting all of you. So, divided by in the denominator what we will get? Again 1 by 2 plus 1. So, that will be 3 by 2. This you can write here s is equal to 2 by 3 k t to the power 3 upon 2. So, again 2 by 3 k is a what constant then position is directly proportional to t to the power 3 by 2. So, this is what a relation the standard relation the velocity we got that is directly proportional to t to the power of 1 by 2 or uh, it is directly proportional to square root of t. And this relation many times they have asked in your examination. Hope it is clear. And these equations you have to remember. Okay. This is a way to solve the questions. So many questions you will get, many questions you will get in your competitive examination. So here you have to come here. Uh, very simple examples let us take. So on uh, many times I observed as observed, uh, there is a conveyor belt. Uh, next, next example if I take, there is an conveyor belt which is lying horizontally, which is lying horizontally. This is what conveyor belt we are having. This is uh, horizontally if it is moving. There is a uh, gravels is falling on it at a constant rate. Gravels is nothing but jelly. Jelly curl will be Jelly curl hang at a constant rate of dm by dt. This 
conveyor belt is moving with the constant speed v okay are getting one conveyor belt ide a belt horizontal lag move aagta ide with the constant speed v alli melinda jelly kallu biruta ide at what rate dm by dt this run by what motor yes sir this will run by what motor the question is that question is that if dm by dt rate the gravel is falling on a horizontal belt then what must be the force increased extra force is required to maintain this constant speed no de without falling the gravels on it it is moving with a constant speed okay the conveyor belt is moving horizontally with the constant velocity or constant speed if the mass is falls the force is exerted then automatically its speed will be decreased right but we don't want to decrease its speed i we want to keep the speed as it is constant then what moves or what amount of force should be exerted by the motor or increased by the motor so that it will move with a constant velocity or constant speed let us take so as we know very well again i'll take here as we know just remember all of you newton second law of motion where we have derived f is equal to ma while deriving i have given you people when mass is constant and velocity is constant i once again i'll write here so f is equal to what we are having check out check out here f is equal to dp by dt the time rate of change of momentum so f is equal to what we are having d what is the momentum m into v by dt if i apply the product rule here what is the force we'll get here m dv by dt plus v dm by dt once again i'm saying that the same what we have taken there this is a equation actual equation if mass is constant differentiation of constant is zero this term is completely vanish then you'll get dv by dt is a then f is equal to ma if suppose velocity is constant this term is completely vanish beta then force is equal to v dm by dt the same thing we have here the force should should, should increase by the motor the force should increase by the motor or extra force required we can write extra force force required extra force required to maintain to maintain same speed to maintain same speed extra force required to maintain same speed as we have taken here as we have taken already there so if the mass is changing if the mass is changing the speed is remain constant so what we are having here what we are having here so all of you are getting i think sir if mass is changing velocity is constant then what we are having velocity is constant then differentiation of velocity is zero then we will get v dm by dt yes the extra force is required that is f is equal to v dm by dt this much of extra force is required to maintain the constant speed of a conveyor belt then if it, this much is a force is extra force is required then what extra extra power is required i'll write the extra power also here extra power as already you know yes or no the power is equal to what force into velocity or speed so force extra force what we are having so just write down extra force what we are having v dm by dt into v v into v v into v v square then extra power is required v square dm by dt hope it is clear all of you boys and girls which are following so what extra conveyor belt for a conveyor belt to maintain the constant speed what extra force and power should be delivered by the motor is that is f is equal to v dm by dt is the force and the power is required that is p is equal to v square dm by dt so this is what the conveyor belt if you are getting the problems so please uh, follow is okay 
so i think all of you have taken this one hope it is clear is it clear so this is what uh, some uh, extra uh, applications we have taken on uh, power related and uh, efficiency of engine related and whenever uh, some problems or uh, application oriented numericals if they ask you have to remember this okay uh, remember or means you just uh, keep on solving the number of problems you will get the idea okay thank you so here let us take the next concept which is uh, very important for your examination so what portion we are having the power is completed so as many possible applications those i have taken so you can uh, take many applications here so how, how much is required or minimum what required that i have taken just uh, follow it so now here uh, we are going to the next concept which is very important for your computing nature so let us take that is the next concept is collision uh, most of the students are waiting i think so when they are going to complete this portion most of you are waiting yes okay let us take uh, what we are having the most awaited uh, topic collision so here basically collision is nothing but what basically collision nothing but what a simple when two bodies are interacting how they interact right when two bodies are interacting to each other then collision happens how the interact each other when they are colliding to each other when they are colliding to each other example here, here let us take here there is an object or there is a first body that is uh, a and the another body we are having here b both the bodies both the bodies has a mass their individual mass let us consider m1 or m2 both are moving towards each other both are moving towards each other with their initial velocities u1 and u2 try to understand concept here there is a a body which has a mass m1 which is moving with a velocity u1 the another body we are having that is what a uh, second body a uh, b body and the mass is m2 and which is approaching to the a and a is approaching to the b a is approaching to a b b is approaching to a after some time after t time they move they both are moving along the same direction in the opposite direction along the same path then definitely after a certain time the a must collide with the b the mass is m1 and m2 so this word we used to call before collision this word before collision beta before collision so this word when collision occurs that what we used to call during collision i'll come i'll come back here you have to observe here during collision the first body is colliding with the second body and second body is colliding with the first body when they are colliding they exert a force on each other and that force a very large amount of force very large amount of force which acts for a small duration of time that what we used to call impulsive force is acting between them when these two bodies are colliding there is a impulsive force between these two bodies if the impulsive force is acting that force is acting for a duration of what a small duration of time delta t if i can say and a is interacting with b b is interacting with a while interacting while interacting the force exerted which force we are having impulsive force which is acting on a due to b in this direction are you getting the force exerted on a due to b in this direction that is what impulsive force we are having f a b the even the force exerted on b 
even the force exerted on B that is F B A in this direction. This is the force. These are the forces are acting on these two bodies when they are colliding. And these are the forces what we used to call impulsive forces and very large forces. And these are large forces which are acting for a small interval or small interval of time or small duration of time. So when the collision occurs, there will be interaction between these two bodies physically. Okay. The strong interaction or physical interaction among the bodies, among the bodies, there is an exchange and this exchange of force and the impulsive force which acts for a duration of time, there is a certain producing momentum or that produces change in momentum or there is a exchange of momenta we can say. By the simplest way, the collision we can define a strong physical interaction between the bodies or among the bodies, there is an exchange of momenta between them. So that what we used to define collision. So here the condition is that the two bodies, they must be physically in, come in contact. Then there is a no need to be come in physically contact. It happens if a real contact they come or it may not. So if the one body is colliding, so what we used to take here, as you know already, there is a force between uh, two charged bodies. It might be, if I consider this is a nucleus, which is a positive charge beta, this is a positive charge and this is a alpha particle which is moving towards a nucleus with a certain velocity. Then the interaction of these two particles, so that what we used to call subatomic particles. <coughs> Sorry. The interaction between two subatomic particles, there is no physical contact occurs. Without physical contact also the collision occurs. So the entire its kinetic energy is converted into certain potential energy after coming to rest the force of repulsion act on alpha particle then it start to move in this direction. There is also collision. So you have to remember for the collision no need to be uh, compulsory the two bodies should come physically in contact. Hope it is clear what is what does mean the collision. So collision whenever it act, whenever it act or whenever it happens then there is will be there is a exchange of momenta there is a strong interaction between two bodies. So now that uh, collision, hope you all are following. When collision takes place, when collision takes place, there are types of collisions. Beta. Collision, the types of collision we are having. Types of collisions. There are two types of collisions we are having. Hope all of you are following. Two types of collision. We used to study elastic collision, elastic collision, elastic collision, and inelastic collision. In elastic collision. Elastic collision and inelastic collision. There are two types of collisions we are taking. Uh, First, what does mean the elastic collision? What does mean elastic collision? Elastic collision under you know. Elastic collision under you know. Not it. Collision I have under as I just we have taken here. The one body, the first body whose mass is m1, which is moving with a velocity u1. And here the another body whose mass is m2 which is moving with a velocity u2. After a certain time definitely they are going to collide each other 
the force will be exerted on each other there is a impulsive force so after collision the body m1 is start to move in this direction with a final velocity v1 and after the collision the second body is start to move in this direction with a velocity v2 hope you are getting are you getting boys and girls all of you following here see here so what happened here yeah uh, first body and second body they are coming with a certain velocity towards each other they collide each other there is a exchange of force a exchange of moment has taken place the first body start to move in this direction with a velocity v1 and the second body start to move with a velocity v2 so as this two bodies are moved then here <coughs> before collision you have to observe here this is the condition before collision yes or no and there is a kinetic energy initial kinetic energy <coughs> what is the initial kinetic energy the initial kinetic energy of this system is half m1 what is the velocity u1 square and plus half m2 u2 square is the initial kinetic energy what is the final kinetic energy the final kinetic energy is equal to half m1 v1 square half m1 v1 square plus half m2 v2 square so you have to observe very clear here in the case of elastic collision the initial kinetic energy and final kinetic energy if after the collision and before the collision what kinetic energy we are having final kinetic energy is equal to <coughs> initial kinetic energy final kinetic energy is equal to initial kinetic energy if there is a no change or if there is no loss of kinetic energy is taken place in such collisions or such collisions we used to call elastic collisions whenever the collision occurs between the two bodies if there is no loss of kinetic energy takes place then that we used to call elastic collision once again when collision occurs between the bodies if there is no loss of kinetic energy then that we used to call elastic collision so however we are having here so you have to observe here so what is the momentum here the total momentum is m1 u1 plus m2 u2 is the momentum before collision so what is the momentum here the momentum we are having m1 v1 plus m2 v2 so here in the case of elastic collision the momentum is conserved if i take the characteristic of the elastic collisions characteristic of the elastic elastic collision if i take here i'll write here you have to first make a point momentum is conserved what is conserved momentum momentum is conserved momentum is conserved so what happened the kinetic energy yes just we have observed kinetic energy is conserved what we are having conserved kinetic energy also conserved because just we observed the kinetic energy before collision and after collision is remain same it is also conserved the total energy however we are not uh, taking here uh, potential energy we does not uh, discuss about it we won't discuss about it our total energy total energy of the system is remain conserved total energy is conserved conserved there is no there is no mechanical energy is converted into converted into other form of energy that is you can take heat sound or light or any the form of energy etc because there is no loss of energy takes place so there is no mechanical energy will be converted into heat sound and light these are what characteristic we are having in the case of elastic collision in the case of elastic collision momentum of the system will be remain conserved kinetic energy will be conserved total energy will be conserved there is no mechanical energy will be converted into other form so one more important thing you have to remember in the case of elastic collision the forces what we are having those all the forces are 
conservative forces <coughs> which forces we are going to observe conservative forces children see how to remember here it is a very important point the conservative forces has been taken place in the case of elastic collision in the case of elastic collision we are having conservative forces and these what the characteristic of characteristics we are having for elastic collision let us take here the second which one we have taken here you have to observe so second one we have taken here that is inelastic collision we have discussed about now elastic collision hope it is clear so what is the uh, elastic collision a simple thing you have to remember there is no loss of kinetic energy if there is no elastic there is no loss of uh, uh, kinetic energy then that we used to call elastic collision now the opposite what we are having inelastic collision let us take inelastic collision so here <coughs> in the case of inelastic collision inelastic collision i'll take the same example here if the two bodies again coming towards each other the collision occurs then the final so directly i'll write here the same thing the initial kinetic energy what we are having that is half m1 u1 square plus half m2 u2 square you you people are going to define now in elastic collision see i just you have to observe so final kinetic energy what we observed that is that is half m1 v1 square plus half m2 v2 square so i'll write only one thing here to understand the concept initial kinetic energy is not equal to final kinetic energy got it point just you have to remember here initial kinetic energy is not equal to final kinetic energy what it does mean that there is a certain kinetic energy is lost it may be any other form there is a certain kinetic energy is lost that means what in the case of inelastic collision in the case of inelastic collision there is a loss of kinetic energy in any collision if there is a if there is a loss of kinetic energy takes place then such kind of collisions we used to say inelastic collisions hope it is clear hope it is clear all of you are getting so here if there is a loss of kinetic energy then we used to say elastic collision let us take here the characteristic of what are the characteristic what we have taken in the case of in the case of uh, elastic collision it will take here in the case of inelastic collision also so any any collision any collision a uh, before collision after collision during collision elastic collision inelastic collision it will be holds a law of conservation of momentum that you have to remember it holds law of conservation of momentum law of conservation of energy energy here you have to observe in the case of inelastic collision energy which energy is lost kinetic energy is lost that will be converted in the form of other energy but total energy will be remains conserved it holds law of conservation of energy also you have to let us take here what are characteristics of uh, inelastic collision the first thing momentum momentum will be remain conserved momentum as we observed momentum momentum is conserved momentum is conserved so what uh, total energy if i take kinetic energy first kinetic energy as you observed is not conserved kinetic energy is not conserved only the kinetic energy is not conserved here kinetic energy is not conserved so total energy if i take total energy total energy total energy is conserved total energy is conserved total energy is conserved total energy as we know the all the sum of the energies which is conserved so here some mechanical energy some mechanical energy is converted is converted into into it may be heat or a sound or light any anything we can take are you getting it may convert any form of energy so some mechanical energy is converted into heat heat or sound 
So it's just if I take an example, if I take a ball, which if it is dropped on the surface, I definitely will get to hear the sound. Then collision is takes place, then certain kinetic energy will be lost. That will be converted. Some mechanical energy is converted. So here some mechanical energy which is converted, that may be heat or light or you can take sound. Okay. So hope you are getting. So here as these loss we are getting, okay, there is a loss of kinetic energy we are getting. So here some, as we observed in the case of elastic collision, there is a pure what we are having, what we are having, conservative force is taking place and here some or all, some, we can say some or all, all or non-conservative forces, non conservative forces takes place, conservative forces. So as you know all, what are conservative forces and non-conservative forces? Yes or no? All of you know what are conservative forces and non-conservative forces? We have already discussed about it in the case. Yes or no? Okay. So now here, this is what the characteristic and differences between the elastic collision in non-elastic collision, or uh, inelastic collision. So here, so what we are having, so you can observe here, so so here the collision, collision for we, we are having elastic collision and uh, inelastic collision in the case of uh, elastic collision, there is no loss of kinetic energy. Here we are having, there is a loss of kinetic energy. So what these we have taken some uh, uh, characteristic of in the case of elastic collision and inelastic collision, okay. So here let us take the next, uh, we are having next type of collision. Let us take, so here Perfectly inelastic collision. So when we used to say perfectly inelastic collision. Perfectly inelastic collision. The next type of collision if I take. Perfectly. Perfectly. Inelastic collision. Perfectly inelastic collision. Okay. Perfectly inelastic collision perfectly in elastic collision. So, during collision in some cases, what happens actually, if two bodies are colliding, if two bodies are colliding, so let us consider, this is the first body, M1, which is moving with a certain velocity and which is colliding with the another body, which may be at rest or which is moving with certain velocity, no problem. So this is what before collision we are having, before collision. So during collision as we know there is a change in momenta. But in this case what happens? So after the collision, the both the body sticks together. After the collision, this is what after collision we are going to observe. After collision, two bodies are sticks together and they start to move along with as a single body. They start to move as a single body with a common velocity. If two bodies are colliding, if the two bodies are colliding and they stick together and they with move as a single body with a common velocity and such kind of collisions we used to call perfectly inelastic collision. Perfectly inelastic collision. What does it mean? We are going to define if two bodies after the collision stick together, moves along the or moves as a single body with a common velocity, such collisions we used to call perfectly inelastic collision. That you have to remember here, perfectly inelastic collision. So in this case, what is the momentum we are having? In this case, so momentum we are having that is before collision is M1, U1 plus m2 u2 what we consider it is at rest u2 is 0 if i consider into 0 that equal to after collision 
एम वन प्लस एम टू ऑफ्टर कोलिजन इज एम वन इंटू एम टू इंटू बी बिकॉज कॉमन वेलोसिटी वी आर हैविंग सो दैट वी कैन से हियर एम वन यू वन इज इक्वल टू एम वन प्लस एम टू इंटू बी दिस वुड वी आर हैविंग द मोमेंटम एंड फ्रॉम दिस यू कैन कैलकुलेट द वेलोसिटी आफ्टर द कोलिजन इज एम वन अपॉन एम वन प्लस एम टू इंटू यू वन फॉर इन द केस ऑफ इन इलास्टिक कोलिजन यू कैन कैलकुलेट द फाइनल वेलॉसिटी द अक्वाइड बाई द सिस्टम दैट इज एम वन बाई एम वन प्लस एम टू इंटू यू वन सो दिस वॉट द वन काइंड ऑफ परफेक्ट इन इलास्टिक कोलिजन वी आर गोइंग टू ऑब्जर्व लेट एस टेक हियर हेड ऑन कोलिजन वॉट डज मीन हेड ऑन कोलिजन सो वॉट वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द टाइप्स ऑफ कोलिजन so in the case of head on collision head on collision we used to take head on collision head on or you can say one dimensional collision one dimensional collision so one dimensional means as we know only one direction one dimensional collision okay in the case of head on collision or one dimensional collision so very important this one they were asked ma many times for uh, your uh, theory examination for five marks let us uh, observe here what does mean head on collision head on collision is when when two bodies are colliding moving along a straight path when they collide before collision they are moving along the same path so after collision also the both are moving in the same path if a same straight line motion is there then that what we is to call that what we is to call head on collision head on collision or one dimension collision so here let us consider two bodies of masses m1 and initial velocities are u1 mass m2 and initial velocity is u2 Let us consider two bodies of masses m1 and m2. Both are moving with the initial velocities u1 and u2 respectively. So here, this is what we are having before collision (BC). The before collision. Okay. So now here, after a certain time, after a certain time, definitely the both are going to be collide. Collide. You cannot say that collide. If suppose if I consider. U1 is equal to U2, then they are never going to be collide. Are you getting? U1 condition if they have give U1 is equal to, sorry. U1 is equal to suppose U1 is equal to U2, then the separation between them will be remain constant. They never going to be collide. What should be the condition if the collision occurs? The condition must be U1 should be greater than U2. Or u two should be less than u. That is the condition. So after the if this condition is there, then after some time, definitely they are going to collide. Then during collision, what happens? As we know, there is an exchange of momenta. There is an interaction. The interaction forces are impulsive forces. That is, F one two force is exerted, and F two one is force also comes in act. Yes or no? So now this masses are m one and m two. This is what happens in during collision. During collision, as you know already. Okay, this is a during collision. So what happens after collision? So after collision, the m one is start to move with the velocity v one, and m two is start to move with the velocity v two. This is what happens. after collision after collision so after collision let us consider v2 is greater than v1 okay so why it is let us take here this you have to remember so this is what so before collision during collision and after collision they are all moving along the same path along the straight line path so that we used to call one dimensional Okay, so now here, as we know, 
in the case of if i consider this is what head on collision in the case of uh, elastic collision bra remember this one which collision we are considering elastic which collision elastic collision we are taking so the elastic collision is there as we will consider here so what are the characteristic we are having in the case of elastic collision as yes, yes, just we have taken in the case of elastic collision as we know as we know momentum is conserved momentum is conserved so what is the momentum we are having momentum is conserved as momentum is conserved so what is the momentum we are having before collision m1 u1 plus m2 u2 so that equal to what m1 v1 plus m2 v2 yes or no this is the momentum so before collision we are having m1 u1 plus m2 u2 so after collision we are having m1 v1 plus m2 v2 yes, this is the equation number 1 suppose if i separate the m1 body one side and m2 body one side so we can write the rearrange this formula or this equation m1 u1 minus m1 v1 just we am taking this side and we'll send this so m2 v2 minus m2 u2 can you take m1 is common here m1 u1 minus v1 so that we can write here beta m2 if i take common so what will get here v2 minus u2 this is what we are having the equation to consider equation 2 okay so now as we know if this is according to law of conservation of momentum so in the case of elastic collision is the other thing is also conserved which one we are having kinetic energy is also conserved kinetic energy is conserved yes or no are you getting kinetic energy is also conserved then kinetic energy is conserved then what is the kinetic energy before collision half m1 u1 square plus half m2 u2 square so that equal to what half m1 v1 square plus half m2 v2 square if i take both side half common then half of get cancel then you'll get m1 u1 square plus m2 u2 square equal to m1 v1 square plus m2 v2 square and take m1 one side and m2 one side so m1 u1 square minus m1 v1 square is equal to m2 v2 square minus m2 u2 square are you getting just i am taking m1 side and m2 one side so here we can take m1 again common so we will get here u1 square minus v1 square so that equal to m2 v2 square minus u2 square so this equation see here so this equation we are getting from what which equation and this is the equation from kinetic energy we are getting so what we are going to calculate final velocity we are going to calculate v1 and v2 right so now here can i write this m1 a minus b whole square is a square minus sorry a my a square minus b square is equal to as we know a minus b into a plus b so that in form that you can write u1 minus v1 u1 plus v1 so that equal to m2 so here we can write similarly v2 minus u2 v2 plus u2 so this is the equation number three this is the equation number three so now you just uh, observe here just check in okay 
सीयर वट इज द इक्वेशन टू वी आर हेविंग बेटा एम वन यू वन माइनस वी वन इक्वल टू एम टू वी टू माइनस यू टू सो दैट इक्वेशन थ्री वॉट वी आर हेविंग इफ आई डिवाइड इक्वेशन थ्री बाई टू सो वट विल गेट डिवाइडिंग 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 इक्वेशन टू इक्वेशन सॉरी इक्वेशन थ्री बाय टू डिवाइड दिस इक्वेशन सो दिस इज द इक्वेशन थ्री एंड दिस इक्वेशन इज डिवाइडिंग ओके दिस इक्वेशन इज डिवाइडिंग दैट वॉट बुरी आयोग एम वन यू वन माइनस वी वन इन टू यू वन प्लस वी वन दैट इक्वल टू एम टू वी टू माइनस यू टू इन टू वी टू प्लस यू टू दिस वी आर डिवाइडिंग इक्वेशन टू वॉट वी आर हैविंग एम वन यू वन माइनस वी वन डिवाइडेड बाय एम टू वी टू माइनस यू टू एंड दिस एंड दिस गेट कैंसिल दिस एंड दिस गेट कैंसिल सो वॉट रिमेन्स बेटा यू वन प्लस वी वन सो दैट इक्वल टू वी टू प्लस यू टू सो दिस इज द इक्वेशन वी आर गेटिंग राइट can we rearrange this one so u u is one side u1 minus u2 so v one side v2 minus v1 so this if i rearrange and this is the equation equation number 4 so you have to observe in this equation so here what happening so you have to observe here u1 and u2 are the initial velocities are you getting u1 and u2 are the initial velocities so v2 and v1 are the final velocities so can i write here relative velocity relative velocity of 1 with respect to 2 and relative velocity of 2 with respect to 1 or in the case of before collision before collision v1 u1 is greater than u2 u1 is greater than u2 the u1 is approaching to second body that the first body is approaching to second body so what is this relative velocity of approach relative velocity of approach so after the collision v2 is greater than v1 v2 will move with the larger velocity v1 is a smaller velocity then second body v moves with a larger then if it is larger velocity we are having then there is a separation are you getting are you getting on my point so here if i consider M one is moving with U one, M two. So here U two, U one is greater than U two. Then of course the it is approaching. U one is approaching to U two. Our first body is approaching to second body before collision. So after collision, what happens? So after collision, so M one is moving with a velocity V one, which is less than the velocity of V two. So V two has a greater velocity, and then of course it go faster. Then the separation between them is goes on increases. So here the separation is in decreasing. Here the separation is increasing. Are you getting? So here we can write approach and separation. So this U one minus U two. When we study relative velocity of one two, that is relative velocity, velocity of first body with respect to second body. This is a relative velocity. One two u one minus u two. So similarly, we can write here, beta. So this I can write here in the words. So this is the relative velocity of approach will be equal to relative velocity of separation. So therefore, so this we can write. Therefore, relative velocity of approach. 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 Before collision, before collision is equal to relative velocity of separation. Relative velocity of separation after collision. After collision. So this you have to remember. So separation, relative velocity of approach before collision is equal to uh, relative velocity of separation after collision. So let us calculate the. Velocities, okay. So we want you to calculate. 
So from this equation, from the equation number 4, if I uh, want to take uh, V2, so we can write V2 is equal to U1 minus U2 plus V1, yes or no, from the equation 4. from equation 4, from equation 4, what we are having, this is the equation V2 equal to, so from equation 1 what we are having, from 1 beta, so that is what M1 U1 plus M2 U2 is equal to M1 V1 plus M2 V2, this is according to law of conservation of linear momentum, the first equation we got. Now I'll do, I'll do here, I'll substitute the final velocity of second body. If I substitute here, then what will get? M1 U1 plus M2 U2 is equal to M1 V1 plus M2 as it is. Substitute this, what is the V2 value we are having? U1 minus U2 plus V1. So that M1 U1 plus M2 U2 as it is. So, M1 V1 as it is, just multiply that M2 into U1, M2 U1 plus into minus minus. So, M2 U2 then plus M2 V1. Are you getting? So, now I will keep here M1 V1, M2 V2. So, remaining if I take this side, then here we will get M1 U1 plus m2 u2 keep as it is this is a min plus is there if i take this side minus it will be m2 u1 okay m2 u1 this is a minus if i take this side it becomes plus that is m2 u2 is equal to what remains m1 v1 plus m2 v2 getting following all of you okay hope you are following so this is the equation we got this is the equation we got Yes, okay. Let us see. So, M1 U1, M2 U2, one side will take. So, here U1 U1 can I take common? Okay, but so here can I write M1 minus M2 into U1. So, M2 U2 plus M2 U2. So, what will get here? 2 times of M1, sorry, M2 U2. This is the equation. So, that equal to here V1 can I take common? So, here what we are having? V1 it can take common. M1 plus M2 write down V1 as it is. So, if I send M1, M2 this side, then can I write V1 is equal to as it is? M1 minus M2 divided by M1 plus M2 into U1. This is the first term. Plus, right, 2 M2 divided by, what will get here? M1 plus M2 into U2. That is what? U2. This is a velocity of first body after collision in the case of elastic one dimension okay similarly similarly just if i take for v2 just don't derive it just write down just follow me as it is no need to derive that so here instead of when v2 we are taking instead of m1 just write down m2 minus m1 divided by m1 plus m2 as it is Okay, instead of u1, that is u2 plus 2 as it is, m2 we are having, write down that is m1, u2 we are having, write down that is u1, divided by m1 plus m2. This is what the velocity of second body after collision. The final velocity is in one dimension collision after collision we are having velocity, so if they ask the final velocity, these are the equations to calculate. Okay, let us take here some cases here. 
So what we are having velocities, this is the velocities, right? So let us keep as it is there, I will keep it there. So this is the velocity. So if suppose masses are same, let us I'll write here the condition. So mass are same. m1 equal to m2 if first I will take if m1 equal to m2 what will happen what will ha happens to the velocities of first body and second body if both the bodies having the same uh, masses so substitute first velocity v1 equal to what will get m1 minus m2 both are equal means m minus m divided by m plus m is 2m into u1 getting so now here plus as it is 2m2 m2 is what m divided by m plus m 2m into u2 as it is are you getting so m minus m is what 0, 0 into this u1, 0, 2m, 2m, cancel. So, what remains but So, if we m1 and m2 both are equal, then final velocity of first body will be equal to, will be equal to initial velocity of second body. Remember. Are you getting all of you? All of you are getting? So, this is the condition. When, if both the bodies having the same masses, when both the bodies having same masses, the same equation I am taken. So here the same equation I am taking. So V1 will be equal to U2. Similarly, if I take for uh, V2, then definitely will get V2. So again M minus M0 put up. This completely vanish. 2M, 2M get cancelled. Then definitely will get that is U1. So this is what the velocities when both the masses are same. If both the masses are same, the velocity of v1 will be equal to u2, the velocity v2 will be equal to u1. That is a condition. Suppose if m1 and m2 equal to both are equal, and let us consider, let us consider u2 is also 0. Sorry, I'll take here. In this case only, in this case only, if m1 equal to m2 then u2 is also 0 then what happens u2 is also 0 what happens what is the final velocity so final velocity of first body is becomes what 0 this completely is 0 and this is also completely becomes 0 so final velocity is becomes what 0 u1 check it check it clearly so what happens v2 so however this is 0 both are equal, then final velocity v2 will be equal to u1. Hope you are getting. Hope you are getting. The complete energy, what kinetic energy is there, initial kinetic energy is given to the completely second body. The second body acquires the same velocity. m1, m2, both are equal. If let u2 is 0, then this is the condition. The first body is come to rest first body which is moving with the velocity initial velocity u1 after collision is final velocity becomes 0 but the second body which is at rest that acquires the velocity that how much velocity it acquire this is the condition hope you are getting this you have to remember here this is very important so here if i continue next or uh, further if i continue let us take here let us consider the same uh, what we are having velocities u1 and u2 I will take those only. Let us consider if, if condition, if I consider, consider, let us take here. If M1 is much less than the M2, M1 is negligible. If M1 is negligible, M1 is negligible, then V1 is becomes what? Bada? V1 is equal to, M1 is negligible. Negligible means what? 0. This is also 0. Then, you will get minus m2 u1 divided by m2. Just I am taking this equation. You have to substitute here. 
M1 is negligible, consider it as 0, then just remove it. So, you will get M2 as it is, U1 as it is divided by M2 plus 2M2, 2M2 divided by again M2, M1 is negligible, so U2. So, M2, M2 get cancelled, here M2, M2 get cancelled, then what you get here? V1 will be equal to minus U1 plus 2U2. Are you getting? This is a condition. I think you are getting. If M1 is negligible, M1 is negligible, then what is the velocity of first body after the collision? So, after the collision, the body acquires this velocity. That means what? The body, you have to take the sign convention sutta. If it is moving in the same direction towards right, that velocity to that velocity you have to consider a positive. If it is towards left, then that velocity is negative. Okay. Then body after collision, the first body after collision acquires the certain velocity that is opposite in direction that is minus u1 and plus u2 that is the velocity acquired by the first body. Then what is the velocity acquired by the second body? So that is v2. I'll write v2. So what we are having better here m2 divided by m2 will get here m1 is negligible third u2 okay so here m1 is negligible completely this term is get vanished then v2 equal to u2 this is a condition so like this we are having many conditions okay i uh, hope the time is over uh, we'll see you uh, tomorrow and we'll discuss uh, some more examples uh, and uh, we'll discuss about the two dimensional collision also in next class uh, thank you boys.